lovies! Welcome back to my channel. Today is day three of Merry Mistmas, which is 10 days of homemade Christmas card making. And our medium today is washi. That's right, we're going to be using cheap old little washi tape to make a beautiful Christmas card. If you're joining me for the first time today, day number one's medium was watercolor, day number two was doilies, and day number three will be washi tape. So we're going to make a non-traditional colored um, Christmas card. We're going to mix it up. We're going to do traditional and non-traditional all throughout 10 days because everybody has different styles and I want to appeal to everyone. So stay tuned to see what else comes about. But this card is one of the easiest cards I've made so far and I've made almost all 10 of them so that I'm pre-recording these videos for you to get them all out on a timely manner. And this one was super simple. <laughs> I had a lot of fun with this one though. I think this one is very fun and very whimsical and it turned out cute and we did it a different style. Our first two cards were done this way where the flap would open like this. This card is on the side. So instead of me blabbing, without further ado, let's see how this card is put together. Now to save us some time, if you guys have been with me for any length of time, you've seen me cut paper a million times. And if you've watched the first two videos of Merry Miss Miss, then you've already seen me cut paper. <laughs> so just to save time, I've already kind of worked ahead and pre-cut paper, but I will show you the sizes. It's very, very simple. So our base card is a seven by 10, which we will fold in half. And this is just a simple piece of paper that I picked up. A lot of the paper that I'm using is, is cardstock, but I picked it up either from Michael's or from Hobby Lobby um, single sheets because I kind of picked and choose what I wanted. So this is just a single sheet of um, cardstock paper that is glittered, just stripes, and it's textured. I thought that was really, really cute. This is from a paper pack of just plain cardstock. And then this is just a plain piece of mixed media paper. So when we fold this in half, which I will do on camera, you just gotta meet the corners up like so. Pinch it. This is always so much easier when I don't have the camera. It's always really hard to see. I feel like I don't line it up properly. There we go. Okay. So when we line this up, this is pretty much the same principle as I did in my first video where I talked about how we just went in a quarter of an inch. So your base is a seven by 10, and then you're gonna go in a quarter of an inch. There's the back paper. See, it's just like a quarter of an inch in, and then you're gonna go another quarter of an inch in. So you're just making layers. It's as simple as that. I feel like my light is kind of really, really bright. But if without the light, you're not going to be able to see. <laughs> but this is what it is. Um, I'm not even, like, maybe I can measure, like, I don't even know where my ruler is at, to be honest with you, to measure this. But my personal opinion is I just, I don't really measure. I just hold paper up and I just go, okay, I like this. So this is about an inch and then this is about a quarter. And then it's the same thing this goes in even more. So this is not even a quarter of an inch, it's like even half of that. Because you're just layering. I'm sorry I don't have the exact measurements for these papers. They're homemade cards and I just eyeball them. I really and truly, I don't do a whole bunch of measuring, it's just not my style. But I think you guys get the drift. It's just however your personal style is and whatever colors you want. Like I said, I'm going for a non-traditional whimsical color. So the next step we're going to be doing is we're going to be inking up our paper. It's just a little bit of distressing so that it pops, in my personal opinion, the layers that we're doing. This is very quick and easy. I pretty much did this to our very first two um, cards that I made as well. And you're just going over the edges with black so that um, when you lay the card down, it kind of has a defined edge to it and it's easier to see in my personal opinion. I'm not going to be inking the card base, just the two layers that are going on top. So the next step, which I think gives it another layer, is I took some gel markers, as you can see, and they're not straight, they're wobbly. I hand drew them. I can't draw a straight line to save my life, but that's what homemade cards are all about. But just to fill in a little bit of that white space so it isn't so stark, I'm going to take a gold, well I picked out silver, but it's not silver, it's gold. 
hold on one second. Here it is. A gold gel pen and do the base part. And then I took a hot pink gel pen and I did this part. And then we'll begin to lay our washi on top of that. And like I said, guys, this does not have to be perfect. That's what homemade Christmas card making is all about. But I used the gold on the furthest outside. And like I said, guys, it does not have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be straight lines. If that stuff bothers you, if like your stuff has to be cohesive and straight and all that stuff, then just use a ruler. But for me, homemade card making is all about the fun. Okay, there's our gold line and then I will go in with the pink gel marker pen rather if you don't have gels use markers if you don't have markers you can use um, colored pencils or you can just omit this part altogether but I really do think it brings a little something something to the card Okay, so now that we have our two base papers finished, we're going to set them aside. And what we're going to work on now is making the little um, medallion, if you will, in the front here. So what I did for this is I took a candle that I always have on my table that my good friend Leslie, who has her own candle company here, um, she made me this beautiful candle. <laughs> it was sitting on my table. I had it burning and I'm like, oh, that's a perfect circle. That's a perfect circle. So of course, this is a scrap of this paper. It's a scrap piece of this paper. So I just took a candle. I laid it down, took a pencil and I traced out the circle to get the medallion shape. Then I have a tree punch out that was gifted to me. I laid it down and I traced it. That is literally how I'm going to be able to get my um, medallion. And then of course, all you're going to do is you're going to fussy cut it out. And I'm not gonna show you the whole process because you guys understand cutting, but I ruined one of these. So I want to just be able to tell you what I did. What I did was, now you may be able to do this if you get a different kind of paper, but because this paper is very textured and bumpy and glittery, what I wanted to do so that the lines were very, very like prominent, I tried to use a um, X-Acto knife to cut the tree out and it would not work. It would not work at all because of the textured paper. But if you have flat paper, an X-Acto knife may work better for you and you will get like perfect like a perfect cut little tree. So that's how I ruined it the first time. So what I am resorting to is I bend my paper and I just snip right in the middle, just like that. And then I just go in with my tiny fussy cutting scissors and I literally take the time and fussy cut my tree out following the pencil line. And as you can probably hear when I cut, you'll hear the scissors cut through that glittered, whatever you want to call it, that glittered paper. You guys can hear it. Let's hear it. So that's why an X-Acto knife didn't work. But like I said, if you choose to have flat paper, if you recreate this card, an X-Acto knife probably would quit. Um, work and it'll be much quicker because you can just go boop 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 you just trace it out with your knife and it'll cut it right out for you so I'm going to take the few minutes that it'll probably take me to fussy cut my tree out and remember don't go into your circle you want to keep your circle whole you're just cutting out the tree image so that the washi will pop up from behind
So I'm just gonna take a few minutes off camera to cut my tree out and then I'll be back. Okay guys, so I got our little medallion cut. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get the washi laid down. So I wanna find the kind of middle of the card, which I'll just take this for, yeah. So this is about right here for our base layer here. Just make sure it's straight, get it laid down, make sure it's straight. I have to pick it up to make sure it's straight. Yes, okay. And then what I do from here is I put my medallion down, line it up in the middle, like right where this starts, and then I tape it to the card so it doesn't move, just the bottom piece. And then I begin to layer it underneath so that I make sure that I have exactly where it needs to be, which I'm going to show you and you'll understand. So then this is the next color I have down here. So I just peel it, make sure the hearts are going the right direction. And then I slip it underneath the medallion and get it laid directly on top of the other piece. There we go. I think you guys are kind of understand here in a second. Then we're going to pop in some red for Christmas and to pop the little bit of red that's going on underneath. Slip it right underneath the medallion just to make sure that I'm getting it exactly where it's supposed to be and I don't go past the medallion. Okay. washi laid we're going to finish our little medallion so to finish off our medallion we're going to glue on the back eyelash trim we're going to like trim our little medallion out in eyelash trim and so that when it's dry it'll fan out and give it this look so you can either use some clear tacky glue or you can use some hot glue. I think I'm going to use some hot glue just simply because it dries very quickly and we can move on in our project. And I'm not gonna do the whole entire medallion. I'm just gonna do a couple little spots. So I just put a little piece of hot glue right here and then that's where we will start our eyelash trim and just make sure that the trim part is always sticking out because you want the trim to fan out around your medallion. So I always put the little trimmy eyelash parts, so to speak, on the outside. You just want to push that down in and then that'll dry very quickly. So that's why I'm using um, hot glue. And then we're just going to do dabs along the way. So that, because the more glue you use, the more likely your little pieces of eyelash quote unquote eyelash will get stuck in the glue and then it won't have this pretty like fanned effect. So you just need a couple dabs to keep the shape along the way. Okay, so there we go. We have the eyelash trim attached to our little medallion with just little places of hot glue on the back. And then we will pop this up with foam tape so you don't have to worry about any glue getting onto your little um, eyelash trim and catching it. But that will be our next step is to put some foam tape on so that we can pop our little medallion up on our washi. So it's very, very simple. I already have a couple, I have you zoomed in guys, so I'm trying to keep you in frame. So I cut a little piece that's short, and then all I'm doing is I'm just 
peeling it off the back, which is the hardest part with this foam tape. It takes forever sometimes. That was pretty easy. And then I'm just going to cut little squares to fit in the little places. So we'll need one here. We'll need one here. Try not to get your little trim stuck in it, which can <laughs> be a little difficult. And then even though this is really small, I'm gonna cut this even in half because I want it down here in the corners. Down here. Just like so. Okay. And then we're gonna turn it over. Try not to get your trim into your foam tape. And then I think you guys can see, I'm trying to put it where you guys can see, you wanna line up your tree, make sure it's straight. And you're going to place it down. Now before we like adhere it here, let me just make sure it's straight. Yes, it's straight. And then you're just going to begin to pull. And what I did is I used the little pointy part of my scissors. And I just kind of began to get underneath and pull the trim. Pull the trim out so that it fans. So it fans nicely. All the way around your little medallion. It's almost like you're brushing it. <laughs> just so that it fans out. And then right here seems to be where we need to fan it out a little more. There we go. See, some of that got caught in the little double-sided tape. No problem. We just pull it out. Okay. And there we go. Now we have our little medallion and it's little eyelash trim fan, if you will. So the next step is to add our sentiment. And of course, this is a stamp. I've used this stamp on all three cards so far. Again, I'm gonna repeat myself one more time. I was gifted this, so I don't know what collection this is from, but I'm so thankful for this gift because I probably will use this for pretty much all of my cards in Merry Mistmas. So this is a little sentiment down here we're using, which is have yourself a merry little Christmas. And what I did is I'm going to take my gel pens because we're gonna carry that same look over to the sentiment that we framed out our um, card in. And I'm just gonna color in the star gold. And these gel pens, I don't know if you can tell or not, but they are glittered, so it gives it a really nice sparkle. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to take my gel pen and I'm just gonna go around to kind of frame out our sentiment just like we did with our card. Maybe I got to zoom you in just a little bit. Zoom, let me move you down a little bit. There we go, just so you guys can see. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did around the card to carry over on both parts. And there's kind of like your cohesive. But again, I'm not measuring or, you know, or not measuring, but I'm not making sure it's perfectly straight. And then I'm going to do gold, uh, pink around that. And then when I fussy cut this out, I'll just make sure I fussy cut around the pink line. And sometimes I change them up a little bit. I made a demo card so that you guys can see where we're going. And then the actual card I make with you, I might not make exactly the same. But I try. Okay, so there we go. And then I'm just going to take a few minutes to fussy cut that out around the pink line and we're going to blue our pieces together and your card should be a finished product. Okay, love you. So off camera, I cut our sentiment out and then I put the foam tape on everything because I have a love-hate relationship with foam tape. I love it because I love what it does in my projects, but I hate having to peel all that crap off. So anyways, now we're going to layer our cards. So I'm going to lift it just a little bit, guys, just to make sure that I have it, you know, is straight 
and as centered as possible. But like I said, guys, they're homemade cards. They don't have to be perfect. So take any kind of pressure about having a perfectly made card off of yourself because they're homemade cards. They're meant not to be perfect. They're just meant to be done with love. Same thing. We're going to line this up the best we can just to make sure it's kind of centered. And you can see a little pop of pink in the background, which we can. We're just going to fan out a little bit of eyelash trim just to make sure. Ooh, I have a little piece of glue stuck there. There we go. Just to make sure that it's popped out. We got our card popping, as they say. Okay. Now that we have, no. Now that we have our trim kind of all fanned out here, we're just going to take our sentiment, which I also have popped up on foam tape, and we're just going to add it off to the corner, just like we have the other one. I kind of slip it underneath. Actually, let's pull this down just a little bit because I don't want to catch any of that. And I just kind of tuck it right off to the corner, just like that. Then I'll fan our, I'll take my little scissors because my scissors work better. And I'll fan that right up just like so. And kind of kind of try to keep it above the sentiment so it's kind of fanned out above it. There we go, and not tucked underneath. There we go. And there we have it. We have our washi. There they are, side by side. We have our non-traditional washi homemade Christmas card. I think they turned out adorable. And just like I said in yesterday's video, I will be giving one of these away. I give the demo away and I keep the one we made on camera. So if you're interested in, in winning one of these, make sure you pop on down into my Dropbox and look for my Instagram because that's where I'll be giving them away. I'll be giving each card that I make every day away over on Instagram. So all the rules and everything will be on there. You just have to go down into the Dropbox to find it. Also in my Dropbox is my Facebook group, which is all kinds of crafty fun. And not only will I post things there, but you lovies can post things there. So if you recreate this or any of the cards that we make together, you can post your version over on my crafters group on Facebook and we can gush and just give you all the likes and all the thumbs up. So be sure to join there. And I also have Patreon and all different kinds of fun things go on on Patreon. And I also have videos over there that you can only see on Patreon. So make sure you check out my Dropbox because there's all kinds of fun things to do over there too. So like I said, this is day three. Tomorrow will be day four. And day four's medium is going to be stamping. So make sure that you stay tuned for tomorrow. But until then, guys, take care of you. Always do what you love. Merry Miss Miss, and I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Bye, guys.